Hello everybody, Bubble Zest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Now recently we've done quite a few Soviet runs and this is what it's been building up to, the final test if you will. In today's video we're going to be doing a guide to the achievement, the Romanovs Laugh Last. So let's begin shall we? Now we would do a focus but no we're not going to do a focus first. We're going to save political power to get a justification on Turkey which will also give us Romania for free. But for everything else, research slots, standard electronics and so on. Intelligence Agency? Oh, that's always useful. Things like ciphers are going to be very useful today. For our sieves, it's going to be sieves, 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 sieves. Mostly sieves. It's still my favourite thing. Anyway, for our mills, for now it's just going to be spamming guns and reducing production of everything else. But we are going to still make convoys as, again, for some reason, the Soviet Union starts a deficit of them. Anyway, for the army, 138 divisions. So we're going to have to break these up into some different stacks and place them onto some different borders. To start off, let's grab the NKVD units, the Barrier Boys, and put them on their own. Let's grab the Mountaineers and the Tanks, there we go, and place them on the Turkish border. Believe it or not, Turkey starts off relatively weak, and despite them having 31 divisions, these 24 will get us most of the way to victory. Uh, any general for now, and we'll change the tanks over to infantry. Shift K and exercise to level 3. For the remaining 96, oh, let's just break those up. 72 will do against Romania, so we'll place them against the front line. The Romanian 24 can remain with Beria's boys. Next, we're just going to gather up the navy. We're pretty much going to all put it all into this fleet, which is in Leningrad. Just as an easy place to put it. You could have it in the Black Sea if you wanted to, but eh, it's not so important. But if you really, really like to have some fleet destructions, be my guest. Anyway, for the Air Force, gather it all up, exercise to level 3. Assign it to whichever general you have against Turkey when the time is right. And that is all our prep out of the way. So like I said, we're not going to be doing a focus so we can get a justification going against Turkey as soon as possible. So let's go to speed 5. And begin. And at the end of January, 50 political power, let's begin our justification on the Turks. And by the 6th, 10 political power, beaten but not defeated. Let's get in contact with some white exiles. Anyway, beaten but not defeated. Unification of the Exiles. Hmm, Paranoia is definitely going to be useful today in some regards, because ultimately we are probably going to have Stalin start the Civil War for us, which doesn't sound good, but it's actually going to be very useful for us. So after unifying the Exiles, we now have the option between the Women's Movement, the True Tsars, and National Unification. Can you tell which one I'm going to do? Well, I'm telling the truth, because we're going to be doing the Women's Movement. And our first anti-saboteur campaign. Ooh, that's not good. Training activities curtailed. The Red Army already has minus 10% XP gain. This would make it even worse. So, while the extra support would be nice, I'm not going to take that. These are common occurrences. So I guess this is the time where we use our satisfactory production reports. And with five days to go before we get our other half on side, we're going to set up our top secret headquarters in Cheetah. Yep, we're actually doing that today. This is only so we can embrace the Black Hundreds. It's not something we actually need to do, but why not? We've done so many runs where we don't do it, let's ha actually have a top secret base for once. Anyway, we've now hugged the Black Hundreds and now we're going to do some covert operations. For the states that we want to control, we don't need to go to Vladivostok this time, we're just going to gain enough states to get to the Urals. So something like this state or that one, that will do. Immediately now we're going to frame an army officer and we're going to approach Smenyov. Something I was completely wrong about in the break in the Russia Civil War video is how defection generals work. I didn't know how it worked because it was the weak NSB released. But what I know now is if any general has the trait cowed by Stalin, they can defect. So, Persian generals is actually quite useful. So sorry, Primakov, you have to go. And who has been cowed by Stalin this time? Oh, Chukachevsky. Oh, oh, that's very good. That's very good. Well, I think we can leave Chukachevsky in his current role as the field marshal for Romania. But Dimitri over here... He is going to be grinding against the Turkish line so we can get traits like infantry leader, so on. It's, it's a bit RNG how this works, but that was a pretty good role at that point. And, in defiance of God and all sanity in the world, what happened? Stalin turned Chukachevsky into a cow. Eh, national unification, why not? Some extra mills never hurt. Our justification on Turkey is ready. Don't forget about the state expansions, it's very possible to just get distracted and forget to do it. Anyway. For now, we're just going to run both of these countries down. They won't be able to stop us for too long. We're very strong. So, declare on Turkey. The guarantee calls in Romania. There we go. 
Something I've said a few times but needs to be re reiterated. If you want to stop your attacks and let Turkey re entrench to grind more traits, you can do that if you want. We're going to be going for things like Professional Officer Core and so on once we have the XP. At minimum, though, we need 5 experience. We really don't need to do anything like the Old Guard, the Youth Unions, but if you want to, be my guest. For now, though, we're going to do things like Article 124 and all the way down to like the Synod or something. Now I take a chance on framing another army officer? Oh, you know what? Why not? We got lucky once. Maybe we'll get lucky again. Doesn't matter, honestly, if Chukacheski defects or not. You can honestly do this achievement with just the generals that you get from the start. Oh dear. That's unfortunate for this guy. But I guess there is no place in the army for such men. So who got turned into a cow this time? Well, Simeon and Gregory. So I guess that's useful because this guy is not going to defect. And Simeon is useful as he's the army reformer. And there's the end of Romania. Now, this is important, Hungary is included in this achievement today, and it's probably preferable to have them flip ideology. So what we're going to do is take all of Romania, with the exception of Debrugia. We're not even going to puppet them. There you go. Ten states for us. Go on, Chukacheski, go and finish up. Might be preferable to have Dimitri become level four, but meh, makes no difference. Honestly, I don't know what's happening here either. Hey, I guess more progress. And there you go, Turkey is capitulated. Now remember, if you're going for the achievement but don't want to annex Turkey, Turkey's actual capital is Ankara, not Istanbul. But for today, eh, we'll just annex them. There you go, one country down, one capital, Ankara. And now we just wait for the inevitable civil war. Sorry, Yagoda, I guess it's Yezov. Just to make sure their paranoia is up, we can always do things like extra state expansions and get some Siberian cavalry or something. Or maybe some Manchurian. Manchurian? Why not? We need Stalin's paranoia to be high enough so once the second Moscow trial starts, he'll start the civil war for us. The main thing that we're actually waiting for right now is the end of winter. Because right now, just frozen, 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 frozen. We'll win the civil war regardless, but it's a lot easier to run over ground unless it's not, you know, cold. Eh, yeah, let's do an old friend. It's time for the return of transpolar flights. One thing you could do with your XP right now is something like air crew surveys. Cheaper doctrines, you know. Um, what do you know? It's the second trial. So be prepared, we're going to be starting soon. Five days to go until the trial, so you know what? It's time for a classic. Let's ensure our victory by any means. Division designer, create empty. Infantry battalions, artillery, saved. And with the exception of the NKVD units, which we can't change, all being changed over. There you go, here's our stockpile. Not bad. Now let's cancel our gun production, last thing we need is Stalin to rebuild it, and send absolutely everything that we can to a Spain. I keep seeing you guys telling me there's a way to send absolutely everything, but I sure can't see it. But it doesn't matter, we'll just send absolutely everything. Guns, convoys, convoys, fuel, you get the idea. So, just max it all out. The idea is we cancel it and we get it all back. There'll be no sharing, it's gonna be all saved for us. Now hold. Wait for Stalin to start the Civil War. His paranoia is over 94, so there it is. Or it is. It has begun. Two arms to Cheetah. And what do you know, that's a pretty good start. Somehow I have 300,000 manpower. Anyway, let's upgrade the Red Army. Well, White Army now. Mo Plan, Cohesion First, Rehabilitated Military. My old friends. Anyway, there's all the divisions we have, so let's change them all over to Cavalry. We'll give them a small front line, something like this. And we'll have them run all the way to like Leningrad, Moscow, Stalingrad. Shouldn't take long. Here are the generals we have for now. Hopefully we'll get some to join the right side. But for now they'll do the trick. And we'll use these small units we have with us. Cancel the lend lease. And immediately start training up units as that gives us plenty of equipment. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. What Stalin's done, he has created a faction with Xinjiang. Because our tension is so high. I don't know if St. Kang will be called in, but it doesn't matter. St. Kang is very weak right now. So, we're just going to spam cavalry as much as we can, as quickly as we can. Deploy, go. Oh, what do you know, time some cavalry. Oh, this is useful. We can go to war economy. Now, this it does depend on which path you want to go. If you want to go non-aligned, you might not have access to this until much later. But if you want to dismantle the Zensky Sobor, you will have access to it eventually. But you know what? As it's available to us now, we'll take it. If there's a victory point, go for it. And 
defectors. Change them to carry if you want, or just disband them for the manpower. We have 119 divisions now, our victory is assured. Randomly, we just love this one partisan that's been here this whole time. And there he is! Mikhail Chukacheski has decided we are the right side now. He is definitely more than welcome. There he is. The Red Napoleon? Nah, he looks better in white. Let's see if we can't get some more. Oh, and this is useful. We have a Nationalist Uprising in the Republic of Crimea. Now, these are useful for two reasons. One, it's for unit grinding, and two, it's for lend lease. So, that is rightful territory of us. I'm not going to win any friends by saying this, but the best country for unit grinding in the Nationalist Uprisings is Ukraine. And that's all I'm going to say on that. If you want, you could just stop your offences right now and just wait for more countries to uprise. Your choice. We're under the surrender limit, so that's the end of Stalin. Our portrait, we didn't get the armor reformer or the other guy, Dmitri, but I guess if we were going to get anyone, it was going to be Chukachevsky. <laughs> oh well, we got one Nashless Uprising that we can grind on. Not the best, but better than none at all. Funnily enough, because of the nonsense of this, we could technically join this faction Sinkiang is in. If you declare war on Sinkiang, something useful will happen. They are technically considered a major at this point, so if you declare war on them, you'll be able to do lessons of war very, very early. The problem with this is obvious though, be careful, Sinkiang sucks when it comes to something like this, because, well, their supply is awful here. But if you want to do something like that, good luck. Uh, yeah, we'll use Constantine here as he's level 3 and an infantry officer. Only be his units facing Crimea. The rest, eh, just put them in the back line and change them back to infantry and exercise. Anyway, back to normal production, shall we? But let's also add some anti-air, as that's useful. Five on that, five on that, five on that, and for now, the rest into guns. See what I mean? Even with just all of this, it's going up so fast. Anyway, lend these scan, just have plenty of units in reserve. Have your relations up to 40, and well, what do you know, they'll help you. You should probably you know, add some sort of company so you can get support equipment from them. And as I said, call for aid. And now we can get lend lease from the main three countries, Germany, Italy, and Hungary. Very nice. They'll basically fuel us for everything that we need. How nice of them. Now let's just consolidate our power. And there you go, Constantine has reached level 4, so he will be our infantry specialist. I was hoping for when Dimitri defects, we could make him the Amaru grouping specialist, but oh well, it's, as I said, luck at the end of the day. The main disappointment is losing the Armoury reformer, as this guy gives only 0 0.6, the reformer gives 0 0.16, so... Anyway, we now need to do the rest of the focuses down to the Zemsky Sobor. It's good that we did the, the rest of them earlier, so we only need to rebuild the Sabor Cathedral and formalise the role of the Patriarch. Anyway, let's continue to add our templates. We're going to add one infantry and one artillery. This is going to be our main division today. And to finish up this cavalry recon, why not? Hey, if they're willing to give over everything just by us being so nice and asking so politely, why not? You can improve with other countries like Finland or any other non-aligned countries and they'll help you. Just that the democracies hate you, unsurprisingly, so don't expect much help from them. Now, funnily enough, we might still be able to get our organiser yet. This guy's going up fairly well. Yeah, we're definitely going to need limited conscription, let's take that now. And good. Armour group specialist. Massive fan of division recovery rate, I am. We're getting a good amount of XP, so let's make our cavalry template good, so it can actually be a good garrison template. Because right now we're using our infantry template, which is just wasteful. And here he is, Return of the Tsar with Vladimir the Third. You wouldn't have expected that when all of this came down, would he? But anyway, for us, now nah, we're not going to dismantle the Zemsky. The main benefit of doing so is only, where is it? Yeah, Siberian lessons, which is nice, but nah, Romanov reconstruction. Oh, and it's happened again, it's the Latvian Military Directorate. Apparently this is a thing when the AI is actually going ahistorical when it shouldn't be. According to Paradox, this should be fixed soon. So, enjoy your look at this, this might be one of the last times we see it. There you go, we've destroyed all of their units. Main benefit of this is so they can stop destroying my units from supply. I can now send pretty much all of them away. We've pretty much solved our deficit in weapons. But any bonuses we can get will definitely be useful, so we'll keep doing this for a while. 
honestly, you have plenty of options. I don't have anything specific in mind. So, you know what? Let's do the declaration. Main benefit of this is, there you go, 10% division recovery rate. I told you, I'm a massive fan of division recovery rate. Oh, why not? Let's go, go westward bound. And there's the Munich Agreement. Here's the most important thing for us, though. Hungary has slipped ideology. We'll wait on one more delivery from Poland, and why not? What's happening here is Lithuania has a war god against them. It probably justified for Vilnius. Well, that worked out very well for us, and we'll just annex them. All our cores, anyway. There you go, two extra states. And now we just wait for Germany to go after Poland. That's when our time to strike will be. We don't need these extra units as they are, so let's disband them. And here's what our stockpile looks like. Mostly a problem with artillery, anti-air and support equipment. But that's fine, we can definitely do things to, do to deal with that. Now that we're at peace, we can finally do rebuild the nation, which is just good because of the negative consumer goods. But the factory repair speed, very useful. But still, the status quo is so. Spam sieves. Now let's do the military reorg for the extra XP. Thanks to hiring Chikachescu, we can also get our second Doctrine of Mass Assault. And why not? It's a fine Doctrine to keep with. Pocket Defense. Oh, and what do you know? Poland gets Memel. So that's gonna... Hmm, I don't know. I think Germany will still have to do reassert Eastern Claims, yeah, so we're still on time. But what Poland has done is just <laughs> taken away a core from Germany. So I guess that's useful, because that's one core Germany doesn't have. Shall we work our way towards pan-Slavic nationalism? Doing all these war goals will immediately cause the Allies yep, to use their guarantees. In fact, that's actually kind of a bad thing then, actually. We'll, we'll finish up the old enemy, but we won't do any others, because we need Poland to be guaranteed by Britain, at least. Just a normal faction map, Mobe. Nothing to see here, folks. Now here's a good advisor for us to go for. Gregory, the same general we contacted some time ago. But he gives us some nice bonuses. Attack against major countries, division speed, why not? We're going to be going after some majors today, so. Minus 5% political power, minus 5% stability. Not really a downside, is it? Well, in the absence of the war goals, let's go down to Ministry of Mortar Armament. That's pretty nice, extra break for an RT defense. Now here's something you don't see too often. We are going to refuse Molotov Ribbentrop. One, because Molotov is not around, but two, it's in our, again, best interest to do so. Oh, and there's Danzigor War. Oh, and what you know, it's war. Alright, let's continue down to Pan-Slavic Nationalism now. Hmm, secure the Baltics, I suppose. Germany's now declaring on the Benelux, and we're going to justify on France. Yep, we're getting involved again. Justify on French Guiana. I would use my war goal as Sweden, but Sweden is a bit of nonsense I don't really want to deal with right now. And it's just easier not to. And justification of France is ready, let's immediately use it. We'll do lessons of war when we can, but it's not important now. We're going to grab military actors from Germany so we can send the fleet over to them. There it is. And we'll place it... Uh, there we'll do. A classic. Yep, we're going to be name invading the UK and France. Mostly for an expanded front line. The more we can stretch Germany out will be very useful later on. Oh yeah, until Denmark falls, we're not moving them. I love that Italy wants to send volunteers for this. No thanks, Italy. Join the Axis at your own peril. Anyway, we, let's begin to move the army into Germany now. Just like that for now until we can move the fleets, but they'll be ready. Oh yeah, we bypassed the Triple Entente because we're at war. Right, Denmark is down. Can we just pass through the Danish Straits now? There we go. Good, let's plan our naval invasion. Going to be my favourite way to invade the UK. Out of Wilhelmshaven to attack the tiles of Newcastle and Hull, and that should do the trick. In fact, we have probably too many units for this, but you know, that's fine. The main thing we're going to be waiting for as well is war score, Italy, Bulgaria and Hungary to be in the war. So that means they're stretched out and in the Axis, so it'll be one war when we eventually go after them. But again, the main thing here is actually just extending our front line. Oh, and Germany's too. There's nothing that says we have to garrison Britain and France, but there's everything that says in the AI's mind that it has to. Anyway, I guess with the other 72 that we're not going to use, because we're going to use these two armies to invade Britain, we'll help Germany take down France. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Caucasus. Uh, usually when I do this is that they've already fallen, and Vici's around, so garrison the Caucasus. Go on that one little army, have fun. Don't need to attack, and as soon as Vici forms, we'll clean that up. 
Oh, and it's losing the war too. Good. And with our help, and totally not us overstacking the supply, Paris has fallen. So any second now for France? Oh no, a little bit longer. But still, we've done most of the work. And even a juicy encirclement. You know, this feels familiar, doesn't it? It's almost like we did this earlier in the run. And there goes France. There's probably no better time to even invade Britain, so let's activate our orders. Go on strike force. Uh, we don't have the supremacy yet, but it's very high, so it shouldn't be too long. Guess I better send the other parts of the army to clean that up. Oh, no, never mind. It didn't matter. We already got supremacy. And we even got intercepted for good measure. But we do have one ace up our sleeve, the UK cipher. Well, unfortunately that guy is sick, so he is going to have to be replaced. Typical, of course. He oh no, never mind. Just recovered enough for me to force attack <laughs> in good time. Break these two tiles and the UK is ours. And there's Hull, so there they go. A classic strategy we'll be employing today. We're going to be encircling London to farm Warscore. The main thing is really not Warscore, but more again, just biding our time. I guess there was some benefit in doing this nonsense that we did. It meant that the UK's AI was very, very distracted as it decided, understandably, to just stack the uh, former Turkish territories. And as soon as the UK is split apart, something like this, yeah, it's pretty much over for them. The AI doesn't like something like this. Yeah, don't think Chukacheski expected this when he decided to change sides. And yet again, London is encircled. Destroy units for the war score. Wop up the victory points and stuff that you want, but keep in mind that taking victory points reduces the UK's recruitable population and factories, and so how many units they can potentially put out. Your choice at this point. I really didn't expect the main defenders of Turkey to be Mexicans, but oh well. Guess we get those guys for free too in the peace deal. And there you go, cleaned up. We already have 40% of the war score, so already almost lead the conference actually. So you know what, here's a tip for you. Don't defend Turkey, the UK will just completely smash into it, giving you extra war score and, well, an easier time of invading Britain. That was not intentional, but I am not complaining. And with that cleaned up, we're next going to park on the Hungarian border. Pan-Slavic nationalism gives us a war goal against Hungary, so if they don't join the Axis before then, that's free game for us. Same with Bulgaria, actually, now that I think of it. Time is limited now, because Germany is just firing on us, so there's going to be a very small window for us to get them in the peace deal and be able to go after Germany. But that's fine, we'll still be fine. I mean, worst case scenario, you can just join the Axis, and I wouldn't hold that against you. Germany is now literally telling us to join or die. Right, immediately we must declare on Hungary, it doesn't matter at this point. We just need to get Hungary involved, and there you go, they're now in the Allies. Now we wait to see what you go and Bulgaria say. Bulgaria says no, and Yugoslavia says no. Fine, you both die. I have a sneaking suspicion some nonsense is going to happen with this. Because the wars haven't merged properly again. Right, they've all taken enough casualties now, so we should be fine, but who knows with this game sometimes. Let's finish up and see what we've been given. Oh, why am I not surprised? Oh well. Like I said, main thing here is to extend our front line as much as we can. But since Mexico is for some reason available, I'm so taking Mexico for myself. I think that's funny. There you go, cheap Mexican puppet. Take all states, untake the cheapest, and there you go, cheap puppet. We're going to use this principle as much as we can with Britain. Shall we do France, or why not? Let's do France. Well, that's as much of a peace deal I'm willing to go for. The main question now is what's going to happen now that the wars didn't merge properly? I don't know. We took 84 states, Germany took 60, and who's the major of the allies is my real question. It's Yugoslavia, fine, that's more than fine actually. Right, Chukacheski, get over there and deal with them. Due to the way we've done this, there you go, Vichy's just gone next. We took quite a lot, we took most of Africa, we got a lot of puppets, but the main thing I want to see is this. The leader Maximo is back, he becomes the non-aligned leader when Mexico goes democratic. Main thing though is to try and finish up before Germany comes after us. Easier said than done. 
Easier said than done. And there's the end of all of them. And we'll just annex. Now I was really just waiting to, for Germany to come after us. They have the war goal. Don't know why they didn't use it. 22 extra states. We really should clean that up later. Well, I was hoping Germany would go after us, but that's clearly not happened. Luckily, we have a way out with this guy, Japan. Right, let's just just find them. 30 days. We have the UK and France as our puppet. Their navies will do fine. I have deployed 120 extra units to just hold the line until then. We are more than strong enough to take down Germany now. Alright, justification is ready, but let's just make sure these guys are fully trained up. Last thing we need is to be on a very bad two fronts. Luckily, Germany has multiple fronts to fight, including Africa, France, so on. It's all going to be very good for us, I think. And they're ready, so, so am I. And what do you know, that will call in those guys too. Whoops. Oh dear, what's just happened here? Yep, I just sent in a crap ton of cavalry and all of this to do <laughs> a Order 66 out of nowhere. Didn't see that one coming? Well, neither did they. And Vienna is ours. So Germany is already done. And there is the end of Germany. Let's make sure we call in France so we can give their stuff back. And now we'll just ever so quickly finish up whatever the hell is left of Italy. So much of the time it's have to get to Palermo or die trying to get to Palermo, isn't it? Actually causing the ultimate supply of a stack to get onto Palermo. Because for some reason we also need that. Or maybe Anzio will be enough. Hmm. Oh, I got an idea. Right, you know me. Cuts to the uh, peace deal. Well, after it's done. Eh? And that is it. 104 states, two states taken back by our puppet, and we've got the achievement, the Romanovs laugh last. We control the capital of Turkey, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Berlin, Italy, though we are going to give that back. Actually, let's do that right now. Much cleaner borders that way. Enjoy that. Victor Emmanuel. We also conquered Budapest and Vienna, and that's everything. That's all the capitals we need. We got the achievements. Now, this Order 66 does need some explanation as to why. I know many of you aren't a big fan of Order 66, and that's fine. I'm just indifferent to it. I see it as a means to an end. But I made a post a few months ago saying I did the Romanovs laugh last, didn't I? And did I do it this way? No, I didn't. How did I do it? I did it the exact same way Bittersteel did it. But, Bitter still beat me to the punch in making the video. He uploaded it pretty much the same day I came to that conclusion. And, well, there's no point in me making the exact same guide as he did, so that's why I did it now. If I was going to do this fairly and legitimately, it would just be the exact same way Bitter still did it. Tanks, cast, so on, take down Germany, take down everyone. But, it's a lot more fun for me to have a different video to make. Again, though, this wasn't preferable. The way I would have done it would be to have... Germany declare war on us and then we'd order 66 them, but whatever. Why did I not tell her this order 66 until the very end of this? Well, I thought it'd be a little surprise. <laughs> you could definitely see me doing hints of it though. Here's what I did. There were 216 cavalry units in Italy. These are just simply two whips, more than enough. And then there was 360 in Germany. Again, just crowded around the victory points. That's more than enough to take them both down. I mean, for Italy it was a little bit harder, but, oh well, you could always just stack more units in your run if you wanted to. But for this run, this is where we're going to end it. I mean, we are still at war with Japan, but Japan's not a problem. But for now, for us, it's also GG. Because that's the Romanovs laugh last. And this, the final test of the four weeks of playing the Soviet Union. It's been a good time playing the Soviet Union. I wanted to use all of my Soviet Union video ideas up because I just had so many. Like, I think if I stretched it out, it could have been like eight, nine videos, but it would have been quite repetitive. So I decided to condense it down into the four we have. We'll definitely play the Soviet Union, Russia again, but I think we'll take a little break for now. So that's what I want to hear from you, actually. Do you, if you have any challenges, guides, or anything you want to see me do, do let me know. 
I am interested. But I do have one thing for you to try out. I, in fact, it's a challenge. I know it's possible, but I want to see how you guys will do with it. I challenge any and all of you to form the Pan-Slavic Union as Democratic Russia. Yep. We've shown in all of these that we, you can form a Democratic Russia. We could easily form the Pan-Slavic Union as we are now, but it's not a Democratic one, is it? That's my challenge to you. Let me know how you get on if you do attempt this. I'm very curious. But until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, doing the Romans off last and basically taking over the whole world. But until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, staring at the Latvian military directorate. I thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. But until we meet again, good bye.